I don't know if anybody heard me saying earlier, I checked on ChatGPT and I said at a presentation, a conference when there's eight speakers, each one of them has an hour, which is the worst time slot? And it said three to four o'clock. So, so just I'm saying. all tired by that time. So. <laughs> And as I said yesterday, uh, which feels like it was like a week ago, how's, has it felt that way to a lot of you? <laughs> My head's about to explode. <laughs> but um, with all the things I've learned, and I've, I've been writing down tips. I'm recording ourselves because, as you know, it'll end up on YouTube. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm a total YouTube junkie. But um, when I started this business, our business was not called Bonica Shears. It was Scissor Mechanic because that's all I really wanted to do. I didn't want any employees. I just wanted me going out sharpening. And, um, you know, I sold a few shears here and there, but Gene coming on board is when all this kind of really changed and took off. If you're not selling shears in the salons, and, and we're primarily talking about salons, but it would be the same way with dog groomers. Um, if you're not selling shears, you're just leaving money behind on the table. You're leaving money there that you could be putting in your pocket. We did a little survey at our sharpeners, or people that came to the sharpeners jam, or those that were online, and we found out that the people that were selling shares are going to be making about twice the amount of money as the people that aren't, and for the same amount of time invested. When Bonnie does training, and uh, we, we do a marketing presentation, that I do that, and we offer the shares has a, another stream of income. About half the people that come for our training will buy the shears while they're there. And I tell them now, you know, and we don't really push them that much. We don't, it's not a requirement or anything. But then I tell them, I says, now when you're out there and you're sharpening, they're gonna ask you if you have any shears to sell. And about two, month, two weeks or a month later, the people who didn't buy half of them come call us up and say, send me the kit. Because they're leaving money on the table. And you know, if, I don't know if anybody who would turn down a, somebody giving you a $100 bill or, or $200 bill or something like that. So that's what you're leaving on the table sometimes if you don't sell shears. So. And I think a lot of people, my son-in-law, he'll, he'll deny it today, won't he? <laughs> but when he came on working for our company, he says, I'm just going to sharpen. I am not a salesman. I'm not a salesman. And um, now he's independent and, um, and he buys shears from us. I think we make as much money from him now as we did before because he sells how many shears a day, how uh, many a week? A week, he sells about five or six shears a week. And uh, so he, he makes an extra six or $700 a week in profit from that. He, uh, he does uh, real well with that. Uh, he, and he enjoys selling shears now. He didn't before. A lot of people think that, you know, if you're going in there to talk to them about buying shears or even sharpening their shears, that you're giving them you're, you're interrupting their, their flow of their business. You're, you know, you're not, you're taking up their time. You're not, you're saving them time. Because if they, get, if they don't buy the shears from you or they don't get the sharpening from you, they've got to either send the shears off or they've got to go to the website of a, another place and buy the shears. Shy person can sell shears. Yes, okay, show and See tell. See team. <laughs> when we go into to a salon and sharpen, we set our machine up at a, an empty station or something like that. And then we just lay these beside the machine. When the stylists come up and drop off their shears, we say, would you like to borrow a pair of shears? And we flip that over and show what's here. Now, like I say, this is a combination for dog groomers too. Uh, we don't have the other one because we sold it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But uh, this, they got a good selection here. They're not used to seeing these many shears. Uh, it used to be that their, their shampoo salesman and their hair color salesman carried some uh, Carried some stuff with them. I hold it and demonstrate yeah. while you okay. talk. Okay, yeah. They, they carry. I'll be, I'll be Vanna White. Are you Vanna here. White? Yeah. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they used to carry samples with them, but now most of the time they're just showing pictures. And they don't, you know, there's a big difference between seeing a picture and actually holding the shear in your hand, opening and closing it, even letting them borrow it, show and tell. We show it to them. When you're in a grade school, Around Christmas time, the teacher, when, before you took your Christmas holiday, would say, look, when you come back, bring one your, your, your favorite toy or your present that you got and come back and tell us why you like it. Okay, now the reason they did that is because they knew when the kids came back from Christmas uh, break, they were going to be all excited about what they have and they're going to be telling everybody about what they got for Christmas. This way, they got them to get up in front of the class, give an oral report, and get some of that energy out. 
So it accomplished two things. It kind of calmed the kids down, plus they learned how to give an oral report. It's not a lot of talking. Gene and I talk a lot, but it is show and tell. If you're a very shy person, you don't want to feel like you're a salesman, that you're pushing something on somebody, just take the stuff in with you. This is something they need. They're going to look at it, and then they're going to come over and say, oh, can I try this out? Oh, these feel nice. How much are they? But, um, and this is how I do it in the salons. Um, I'll lay the shears out here while I'm sharpening, and they'll come over and look at them. If Gene and I are together, he'll sit there like he's sitting there now by the shears, and just they'll come over and pick them up. And he really won't talk to him until, believe it or not, he won't talk to him until well, they come I, over I and sometimes, ask. They, if they look at the shears, would you like <laughs> to look at some, you know, hold them or play with them or something like that, you know? But uh, the thing about it is if you don't know anything about shears, uh, when, even Flip when we train voice. people, we talk about, uh, you know, go to the... Um, to them and tell them that you've, you've been sharpened. We're getting to that one. Oh, we are? Yeah, that's going to be one of the things. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, you can't see the board what's see the coming board, up no. there. Yeah, so I just have to tell you. Okay. I, I know you're not used okay, to me telling ahead. you what to do next. No, never. She never tells me what to do. <laughs> you know, I mean, so just you're just going to have to kind of We've get been married going. 50 years, and she, I don't think I'm safe because she's just too tired of training somebody else, you know. So. <laughs> I don't think anybody would want to be trained like you, baby. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's another thing we talk about in the schools. We ask how about, you know, what's, what's perfect marriage? Bonnie says when you find somebody and you, you marry them because of who they are, you, don't, you can't change them. And I say, well, from a man's point of view, you learn to speak in two-word sentences. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. You're right. And if you get that down, then you'll have a successful marriage. <laughs> This other one here is talking about how the shears are going to make them money. I think Gene kind of mentioned that. That's something they need, and it doesn't really cost them money. You have a price. The price of the shears are $300. That's a moderate price of a shear today. Um, if they get them sharpened for five years, that's an extra $300. So the total cost of the shear is, is $600. If they're doing 10 haircuts a day, five days per week, that's 50 haircuts, 50 weeks per year, that's 2,500 haircuts in five years. And those shears should last them 10 or 15 years, but let's say five, because they get tired of them, they'll get something new. That's 12,500 haircuts. And so the shears are costing them less than a nickel per haircut. Their shampoo costs them more than that. The hairspray costs them more than that. Even their combs cost them more than that because they're always losing them. Yeah. So what you're providing for them and sharpening and in the shears is making the money and it's not really costing them anything. Now, the, these figures of how we got this information, I don't know if you remember, Gene, but it was Don, the same person that John yeah. was talking about. And he, he gave us these numbers and because um, he spoke at our sharpener's jam one year. And it was kind of I'm, um, mind blowing to me how um, a great an asset shears are to this hairstylist. Take the shear, bring it down your middle finger, and rest it right there. When you feel resistance, you stop, okay? And you want it to be in this top digit here. Do you want me to give you my hand and you, sh you measure? Sh show them exactly how you do with a okay. hairstylist. First Just off, I'll ask like. the hairstylist, have you ever had your hands measured for shears? And I do this. Usually they'll put their hand in mine, okay? And sometimes I'll say something like, well, now, you know, this really has nothing to do with buying shears, but it's the only way that a big, ugly guy like I can me you can get a good pretty girl let hold her hand so <laughs> we do that and I, I show her how you do that and if it's in this top digit up here that means that when you're holding the shear properly it's going to be balanced in your hand okay now some people like longer shears some people like shorter shears that's fine it's just not going to be as balanced as it is if it's the right size okay now uh, don't ever tell somebody that you know this is the right size for you. You can't get a, a larger one or a shorter one. Uh, the customer's right. And whatever they want to just say now, be careful if you get a longer one because you're more apt to cut yourself between the fingers. If you get a shorter one, you're more apt to cut your knuckle here, right in the knuckle. So you just want to make sure you get the right size. What you're also doing is you're doing something most other people don't do. You're taking and touching them in a non-threatening yeah. manner, and you're showing them something that most people haven't shown them because most people don't do this. And I know because we've been doing hair shows for 30 years and I, was, I started doing this 30 years ago. Now more people are doing it, but still, 
that's something different. And they say, oh, wow, that makes sense. And now you're the expert. You've told them something they didn't know before. And if you can ever get to the point where you, they figure you're the expert, then you're on easy street because then it's, everything's easier for you. Plus you've touched them in a, in a positive way. And if you're dealing, I don't know about dog groomers. We deal more with the hairstylists. Yeah. And I kind of disagree with some of the people about the hairstylists being prissy or whatever and hard to deal with. I find hairstylists tend to be people pleasers because that's why they get in the business. They want to fix you. And um, I, but I notice that people have more rapport either with groomers or stylists. It's very few people that are 50-50. So, you know, stay where your, your repertoire or your, your rapport is. But with stylists, they like to be touched. Their, their personal space is closer, isn't it, Gene? Mm -hmm. And then also when you talk to the stylist, this may be further on my presentation, yeah. I can't remember, but <laughs> I'm jumping here too. But don't get in and look in their face no. if they're cutting hair. You stand next to them and make eye contact with a mirror. Yeah, that's very important because if you get between a stylist and a mirror, they may take their scissors and go after you. Because uh, yeah. that's the way they make their living. So I use five closes when I'm selling. I mean, well, five, <laughs> anyway, I use clothes, four, I think it's four. A close is well, what anyway. I'm <laughs> But the puppy dog clothes is you loan it to them, they try it. Okay, if you ever bring a puppy dog home to your house and you have young children, you ain't getting that puppy dog out of the house because they love that puppy dog. Even if it pees on the floor. Even if it pees on the floor, yeah. So, but, uh, so you give them a puppy dog clothes. When I, would come, when I was coming up, that's what they used, the car salesmen used to do. They used to tell you, well, take the car and drive it home and come back tomorrow and we'll talk about it. Now, if you did that, the car would be in Mexico or Cal <laughs> you know, Canada. So, yeah, but uh, the, that's the puppy dog clothes. Cheers. Okay, yeah, asking their opinion. About Let them the sell their own, the shears yeah. for themselves. Yeah, yeah they, they come back and they, they tell you every good thing about the shear. And they're, they're saying, well, it, it does point cutting real nice. It does slide cutting real nice. Uh, it doesn't push the hair. You know, it's real smooth. And you just listen to them, and they're, sell, they're actually trying to sell you the shear, telling you how good it is. Uh, and while they're doing that, they're also selling the shear to them, too. Now, you may not get them that time, but you may get, you may get them you know, the next time you come in. And really, if you go to a sales seminar and you're talking to people, they'll tell you it takes about eight impressions before somebody will make a decision to buy, a shear, buy something. Now, that could be seeing an ad in a magazine, seeing it on the Internet, uh, talking to a, uh, another stylist just bought a shear. And when you walk in there, you don't know whether you're number one impression or you're number eight. Sometimes we'll walk into a salon and Bonnie will be sharpening and they say, you have any shears to sell? And I said, well, yeah. And I op open it up and they said, I want that one. Hard sell, right? Especially if you've been in there before and sold somebody else and they like the shear, they'll point the same one the other person bought. And sometimes, you got to sell in, in two, three minutes. Now, other times you got to work at it, but that's that's fine too. Uh, good, the pay's good, so it doesn't matter. But uh, you know, you're really missing out if you're not selling our shears or somebody else's shears. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter to us whose shears you sell, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it, you have to sell something there. Also, some people uh, do a good job with uh, uh, blow dryers and uh, ceramic irons, combs, razors, different things like that. Uh, Ceramic irons and blow dryers, you don't make as much as you do sell shears, yeah. but anytime you can add something to the order, you want to have those extra income streams, whether it's do, you know, sharpening shears, sharpening clipper blades, that's another income stream. Uh, sharpening uh, knives is another income stream. You know, uh, selling shears, you know, selling clipper blades, different things like that. That's all things that brings money into your pocket. The more things you can do for that stylist, the more important you are to their business. Yeah. So, and then once they buy a shear from you, they're going to prefer you to be the sharpener. And uh, a lot of companies, when you sell their shears, they say, well, you got to send them back to us to be sharpened or your warranty's null and void. Well, with us, we train sharpers, so we, don't, we would prefer you to sharpen them rather than send them back to us. So even if you were to take a convex edge shear and bevel it, which we know we wouldn't do, uh, and it comes back, with some warranty work, it's still under warranty. Yeah. Our warranty covers everything. It covers the screw, the bumper, the washers, uh, 
The finger, even the uh, removable finger rest comes off. We will replace that for them if they ask us to. And also, if they drop the shear, and I know dog members would like this, they drop the shear and it, the tip breaks or, or the chip breaks, we will replace the shear for them. And All that's it, a future slide, but we'll, oh, we'll, we won't repeat ourselves. Keep going. But it, <laughs> So what, what goes on there, that's really a good selling point for shears because not everybody's broken a shear, but everybody knows somebody who's broken a shear. And if you give them a whole new one, it, it's, you know, it's, it's just, you, you're the greatest person in the world. And we do that at the hair shows sometimes. They'll come back and says, uh, you know, I bought this year five years ago and I dropped it and it broke. Is there anything you can do for me? And I'll sit there, look at it and I'll say, you dropped it? And they say, yeah. You broke it, huh? I said, yeah. So well, there's only one thing I can do for you is give you a new one. And they, they go, what? <laughs> and we just take it back. Most of the time, if it breaks, it breaks at the tip. We're sharpers. We shorten the other side. We clean it up. We sell as a used shear. We get our money back. We haven't lost anything. And we've made two people happy, the person who we gave a new share to and the person we sold a very, a very nice share for about half the price they would have. Oh, we sell for. it at our annual garage sale. If yeah, you yeah. If anybody's been to our garage, yeah, sale, garage that's, sale, that's where those come from. And I do want to mention that most of the time you're selling to women, right? Women are emotional buyers. That's not something negative. Some people take that as a negative thing. We're emotional buyers. That means if we pick up those shears, they feel good to us. They cut nice. They're pretty. My friend next to me in the station next to me bought those shears or similar ones, and she's happy with them. I don't, I'm not going to ask a lot of questions about steel. Don't overwhelm me. I'm not saying that they're, they're dumb. I'm saying that they know what they like. Does that make sense? They're artists. They're not they're engineers. They're artists. They're not engineers. So, so they, 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 don't, they may not buy the way yeah. a man would buy a car, for instance. You know, I, I mean, I buy cars based on how many cup holders they have. Yeah. You know, uh, if you saw me with my th little three wheel tricycle, I have a cup holder. Yeah, I bought them. A she cup bought holder. me a cup holder. So. All but, right. So you're on to give choices, and you've got okay. the length, the color, yeah. the cash yeah. credit Venmo. Give so. them choices. Like when you measure their hand, usually they're two sizes, like a six and five and a half. So you put out your shears out there, and you give them a six and a five and a half. Preferable if you can the same shear with the same handle, and say, okay, try these out, and out they'll go that, and I'll try it, and I says, I, and I says, okay, now close your eyes and try them out. They do that again. If you close their eyes, that takes off some of the sensory things. They can feel the shear a little better when they do that. Okay, now you say, which one do you prefer? And we'll have them laid out there and say, well, I like the five and a half. So then I'll pull out three or four five and a half inch shears, lay them down there and says, now try these. And they try those. And if you put four down there, they're gonna eliminate two. If you put three down there, they're gonna eliminate one. There'll be two left on the table usually. And I said, okay, uh, which one do you like the best? They said, well, they're about the same. Uh, maybe this one a little better. And I said, okay, we'll just let, let you know out of those two shears you picked out, this one is uh, $198 and that one's $298. Does this, does, and you said you'd like the $298 better share better. I says, does this year feel a dollar a month better than the other one? You don't want to say $100 because that's a lot of money, but a dollar is nothing. And if you think about that, uh, 12, 12 months, that's $12 times, you know, 12, that's 144. So that's like actually less than that. So you, you break it down so it's a little smaller for them. You give them choices of size, price. Uh, sometimes they, they, they might like uh, colors, uh, a shear with color on it. Uh, Bonnie doesn't like shears with color. No. Okay, because it cheapens the shear. It lowers the Rockwell when you put it on there. But girls and ladies, like pretty things. That's why my wife married me because I'm so doggone pretty. It's pretty the, isn't it? the problem is, it was the this is what hair. this it is what pretty hair. turns into after a while, you know. So <laughs> you got to be aware of that. So, but uh, they like pretty things, and we tell them, okay, now this is a good shear. It's still, a, it's still a good shear, even though it's colored. You just, it's just you've cheapened it a little, lowered the Rockwell a little bit. Is what you've done, and you say. Buy Here, this you want to hold a colored one? So yeah, here's a colored one right there. Yeah, like this. He says, buy it because it's pretty. 
not because it's better. This has a titanium coating on it, and some people will tell you the titanium makes the shear stronger. It doesn't. They'll tell you the space shuttle was made out of titanium, and little do you know, if a little meteor hits the space shuttle, guess what happens to it? <laughs> it can go down real quick. But anyway, you just want to be aware that Pretty is, is a, a big thing for them. Tell and, them how you sell that particular shear, because I'll always... He oh, yeah. Stuff. yeah. He finds a way to make them laugh and be funny. Yeah, I say, well, what's nice about this shear is I know sometimes you leave your shear on, the, on your station, and uh, some of your friends will borrow your shear and cut with them. And I says, and you probably... A lot of people don't like that, you know. So I says, well, what you do is let go back the next day and see who has a rash on their hand, because this is called the poison ivy shear. Has a rash on their hand, then you'll know who borrowed your shears. And every once in a while, we'll go to a school, and a, a, one of the students says, really? And I said, no. <laughs> I'm a salesman. Sometimes I exaggerate, you know. But uh, make, if you can make them laugh when you're talking to them, make them feel good about themselves, you, it's just so much easier. Uh, I like people. I like talking to people. And I really enjoy what I do. Uh, I'm 69 years old, and I should be retired, laying in bed, watching TV all day. But uh, I, I, especially after the accident. I make him get up more. She makes I'm me sorry. get up. You know, uh, I go in half days because my back can't take sit, stand, sitting up all day. But uh, I go in and uh, go in and buy their bra their lunch. And then we come back, and uh, if it, she's training, I do, the, errands. I do the marketing, and I also run errands. And when my daughter, who's the office manager, goes home early because one of her kids has a problem, I man the phone. So Tell them about the choices of payments. Payments, okay. You want to have choices of payments. You've got cash, of course. Then you've got credit cards. Square is fine. If that's, if that's all you've got, that's fine. You don't have to have your own... Uh, Square is nice because you can put in, we, I don't use Square much, but you can uh, let people make payments through Square. Have you all experienced that? Yeah, it, and it'll hold their number and it'll run their payments. And yeah, we get the money right away, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We get the whole, like I if think, it, they, I think so on that yeah, one. I don't know. I think, I I think that's, use, so. we don't use it that much, but if it comes in like you get the $300 and then we break it up. Well, a lot of times we'll break up and our... And we sh use shop pay on our website. If you've got to sell stuff on your website, you can use shop pay or something. Yeah. And then we also do our own credit thing. Yeah, we do Tell our own credit how thing. we do that. What we do on that and what we recommend y'all do is, is like uh, charge, take the half 50% up front because that way you've got your money back out of the shear, okay? Uh, and then uh, and any sales tax you have to collect. So if it's $300 in our area, it'd be $150 plus $18 sales tax, so $168. And then you've got the credit card number. You just say now, today is the what, the 25th? I think so. It's close enough. Just say it's 25th. Okay, next month on the 25th of November, we're going to charge your credit card $75. And then the following month in December, we're going to charge your credit card to $75 again. That'd be that, Christmas Day, too. Yeah. So that, right. that way we don't have to go back there and interrupt them, take our time to try to collect from them. We get it automatically. And we tell them, say, hey, it's like if it's a debit card, we say, if for some reason there's not, the money's not there, just call us and we'll, we'll hold it off for a month. It sounds like we're being nice, right? Well, I'm not going to get the money anyway, am I? So I just tell them, we'll, we'll be nice and we'll hold it off a month. Next one there. All right, so this is where I'm going to talk a little bit. And he, he mentioned us about the upscaling. Um, so the easiest person to sell to is someone you've already sold to because they feel good about you. They're comfortable with what they bought. So you've sold them, let's say, this shear here and say, hey, don't you in interested in buying the matching thinning shear? So now you've sold them, you know, sell them a set. So you want to upscale them and, and I think Gene always likes to talk about, do you want fries with it? You know, mm -hmm. when you get your hamburger, they say, do you want fries? This is like you sell them one thing, and then before you close it, do you want to want this? Try to have, when you're, if you're selling shears, try to have sets. Now, we find personally that we probably sell two or three single shears to a set. Yeah. So you don't want to have all your shears in your case as sets. I mean, maybe your display case. But you'll probably end up, um, about every third sale, you'll end up selling them the thinning shear to go with it. Your best selling uh, shears, you want to have a matching thinning shear for. But you, know, yeah. you don't want to have a matching thinning shear for every shear you have. 
but you, we always talk about you want to go wide instead of deep. Uh, there's some companies out there will set, they'll sell you 21 shears, a kit with 21 shears in it, and they set, they have seven shears and they go three deep. Now I would rather sell. I think it makes more sense to have 21 sh different shears to sell. Big selection. And uh, with you know, if you're basically if you call us up in the morning, it will go out in the afternoon to you, and then it'll take you know maybe two, maybe three days at the most for you to get it. So you can get the next the refill uh, very quickly. Well, when you go to buy a car, you like to go to the dealership that's got a lot of different models than the ones that's got a few models, but they've got plenty of each one. There's other types of spe spe specific specialty shears. That's hard to say really fast. Um, that I call them, we kind of call them gee whiz shears. It's always fun, even if you don't sell a lot of them, to have some things that are different, that aren't just normal shears for them to look at and let them play with them. Um, the swivel thumbs, um, some people that's very new to them and um, some people that's it's in, it's elongated their career. Um, I don't have all our shears. Let me put, pull out this bigger case here, Gene. This has got more in one it. One on the right? bottom. One on the bottom. Y'all are all familiar with swivel thumbs, right? And the way Gene sells the swivel thumbs, he'll tell them, let me find one here. Isn't that impressive the way she folds that out and have all those shears there? Yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned that. That was how we got Jay to sell shears, by the way. We told Jay, he says, okay, you don't have to sell shears, but you gotta take them with you. And when you, but, but your business cards have to be inside your case. So they're, they're, you go to the receptionist and she says, oh, well, nobody needs anything. We don't need anything. I said, well, that's okay. Let, can I leave your, my card? Well, they're glad for you to leave the card because they figure now you're gonna walk out the door. And you say, I don't think I have any in my pockets. Let me look in here. And then you start flipping this out. And when you start flipping this out, you say, where's my card? I know I had it here somewhere. Let me just set this over here next to you, ma'am. And let me go out to the car and look for my card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It was in this pocket here all along. Now, by the time you flash these shears all over, I mean, this is their main tool. They're going to come look at them. So they kind of sell themselves. Well, I was back to, I'm digressing now. Here's, here's another shear that Gene likes to sell, too. Tell them about your self-defense shear. Oh, yeah. You got to take this one back. Okay. I, when I sell this one, I tell the, cut, the stylist this is their self-defense shear. It's got two uh, finger holes up top. I say, you put it on your hand like this when you leave the salon at night. <laughs> Let me hold this. <laughs> Leave the salon at night and put it in your, like this. And if anybody gives you any crap, you hit them in the jaw, stick them in the neck, <laughs> open and close it twice. And if they don't go down and they're still walking around, you run because they're on some kind of drug. And they, that gets them a chuckle and everything like that, you know. But yeah. uh, Anything uh, to kind of liven it up. But the, uh, the uh, ones with the swivel, here, hold this again. Ones with the swivel, the way Gene will tell them, you know, so now... Here, you, you, you show them and I'll relax my hand. Okay, I'll say, well, now the swivel. Let me take this. The swivel actually releases your wrist, stress on your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your lower back. And also, if you're short, it can resist, uh, uh, help you with your, lower, your legs. Because if you're short. He doesn't touch the legs. Though. Yeah, I don't touch the legs. If, you, if they're short, they have to stand on their tiptoes to get on top of the head. And also, with this, one thing you can do is you can turn up. I can't do it as well since my hand was injured, but turn it up like that, and it gives them an extra two inches in height. So well, I was talking about the relaxed hand. How oh, yeah, the it? relaxed yeah. hand. Okay, yeah. you got your, your thumb. Your thumb. <laughs> okay, I, I say do this. This is the straight <laughs> handle. This is y'all set, and this is the twister. And this is the natural position of your hand. When you put your hand down there and pull it up, that's the natural position. If your hand's in a more relaxed position when you start, it's going to be more relaxed at the end of the day. And he'll tell them to relax their hands. So I'm going to relax like my that. hands relax, your, relax hand. your hand. And, and then, then you put it into the I'll relaxed put it, hand. put it in the relaxed hand. And it fits it perfect. And, and they don't it, even have to be twisting it all the time. It's just it fits in a relaxed hand. And, it and helps even, with even when you work problems. it regular, just like a regular shear, that thumb's going to be like at a 45 degree angle. Because it, the shear fits your hand instead of your hand fitting the shear. So there's less stress on your hand. Uh, not everybody can get that. 
Uh, they're so used to using the other ones, they, they can't stand the switching around. But uh, we actually give 30 days. If they, if they don't like it for any reason, we'll give them their money back or, or let them give a credit towards something else. Most of our distributors do two weeks if they're going to do that. And, but it's their, their business. They can do what they want to. We just don't tell them to do that, how we do it on time. Um, I'm going to skip these other ones. If you all would like to come by our, our table, and I'll show you some of these other specialty shears, but it's fun to have specialty shears and let them play with them. Sometimes you ask them, how would you use them? We've got a, like a no-line blender, and it's not just us that have these specialty shears. Now, and we've kind of talked about this. When you choose a shear company that you want to go with, these are what you want to look for. The warranty, the sharpening, the map policy. Do you all know what a map policy is? Minimum advertising policy. So like, um, if we've got this year, the minimum advertising policy is 228. No one out there should be selling it for 199 because that's our minimum advertised policy. Now, can you sell it for 199? Yeah. But you can't advertise at that price. And we have one guy that he's just a booger about the internet going in there and searching and calling me on the phone. Bonnie, I saw that scissor on eBay for, you know, $10 cheaper. So don't advertise them for less than what we advertise them on our website. But and other that's, companies that's, have that too. That's to you want to have you. that. Yeah. Because we have distributors all over the United States and actually all over the world. And uh, if I use the example, we have a distributor up in Canada and he sold a shear off his website, but he didn't have that size. He had a five and a half, they wanted a six. So he says, Gene, when you drop ship this shear for me, I said, sure, give me the address. Gave me the address, it was two blocks away from my house in Atlanta. So I actually hand delivered the shear to and the And that lady. brings to the next one, territory and drop shipping. Mm -hmm. Some companies will give you an exclusive territory. I don't like that. That means that you can't go somewhere else to sell shears. You can't necessarily put them on your website. You want to go with companies that will do drop shipping for you. So you can put them on your website and they'll send them straight to your customer. Even if you don't have a website, you've been, at a, at another, you've been to visit your aunt and you sold shears there, but you didn't have a five and a half inch. You want a, a company that will just send it straight to that customer so you don't have to go back, you know, three states over to deliver it. Um, quality and selection. All these things you want to look for with whatever companies you buy from. Um, you want to make sure they allow you to do the sharpening. Um, that's, <laughs> that's kind of bad if you're selling shears and you can't sharpen it. Um, Gene talked about the warranty, fast service. No buy-in. I'm seeing that with a lot of companies now. For you to sell their shares, you have to buy in a big amount. Some of them are like five thousand dollars. You do have. We do have a buy-in. You have to buy one of something to get some for us to sell you something. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, they say, well, what's your minimum ship? And I says one of something. You know, <laughs> if you want to buy a, a five-cent washer, I'll send you a five-cent washer. You're going to have to pay shipping for it. You know, the, the 60, what is it, 60 cents down for first class mail? <laughs> 65, I think. 65, but, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah. Distributor look up, do they have a listing on their website where, you know, you, you can be found, people can find you? Now, we said there's no buy-in, but we have on our shares, we have some kits that you can buy. Um, more shares, CJ got a kit <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Um, it gives you an extra discount over the wholesale. Now, wholesale is half of whatever we sell it on the website is, the, the minimum advertised policy. But you can get an extra 25% off if you buy $1,000. And if you buy that, that, if you buy that kit, for the next year, you get the extra 25% off, even if you're buying one share at a time. And over that year, if you have bought another $1,000 worth of shares, you just stay at that. And then on the website, I don't mean to be sound like a commercial because there's other companies that do similar programs, and yeah. I'll be showing you that as well. Um, you're, on the website, you can put in, when you log in, you'll see all your prices change. But these are some of the kits that Gene's put together and brought with them that we have. But you can buy just one shear and see how your customers like it. And you should have some shears to loan people too because when you're sharpening, they say, well, I can't give it to you because I've got a customer coming and uh, I need my shear. Well, here, borrow this one while I sharpen it for you. So it just makes good sense to have that. And uh, it, it, Yeah, again, even just a couple of yeah, shears just, just to loan out. Yeah. And yeah. might as well loan out shears that they can buy. Yeah. We also sell Casho. They've been around the United States for a long time, and they made special kits and special pricing just for the sharpeners. 
No other sure company has done that for no. us. You can't get these special discounts the whole year like ours, but the discounts are pretty huge and you can get the, those kits once a year. And we also brought the cow shows with us if you want to look at those at our table. Um, and, but we can't sell out of the United States. It's only for those of you not mm. USA. I know, I know. Yeah, and the reason we wanted to start carrying cash shows is y'all all know about the Hadatori Hanzo. And they're selling these shears that are, you know, $1,000, $2,000. And if you sharpen them, you know they're, <laughs> you know they're like about comparable to our $200 shears. But if somebody really wants to spend, um, you know, $1,000 for a pair of shears and they want something 100% Japanese, 100% Japanese made, Japanese steel, we can provide that to you as well. Because, um, you know, if the customers want to spend the money, let them spend the money. Don't tell them no. Yeah. So we've covered a lot in a short period of time, and I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. Yeah. So um, do you all have any questions for us? And, and we will be here for tomorrow, so we'll come by the, the booth and we'll answer any questions you have. If you're interested in the machine, we'll show you the machine. We'll also show you the kits and things like that. And, uh, and I'm looking. Nobody fell asleep, Gene. Yeah, that's good. Usually in the class of students, we have somebody fall asleep on us. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody fell asleep. Everybody's still listening to us. I didn't, didn't see a lot of laughs at our jokes, but I mean, still. It's, <laughs> for, from 3 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, this is tough. Do y'all have any questions for us? I just wanted to make a comment. Bonnie and Gene have been sharing this information, and this is how I started selling shears. And I kept my business cards in my case, and I would open up my case, and they saw the scissors, they saw a picture of my family, they saw, and I didn't go so far as to go, oh, I put those scissors in. Yeah, and, and your, your family had to be shown in long view. <laughs> the pair, the, the panoramic. Panoramic view, yeah. <laughs> panoramic for what? your children. You got a bunch of kids. <laughs> the, the loner shears, absolutely essential. That's how I sold shears. Here, mm -hmm. Use this soup, this sharp shear while I take care of your dull one. And that's how I sold shears. It's exactly what she taught us, taught me years ago. Mm -hmm. You need to care about your customers and having a loaner while you're sharpening for them is, is important. Um, I haven't done the payment by car and all kind of stuff yet. Yeah. Suggestions, advice. Please. One thing I can tell you, uh, when I give them that that um, option, about 50% will yeah. decide to go ahead and pay Especially for it. Especially the hair shows and stuff like that, we give them that option. If you use Square, Square will do it. I see some heads nodding. Square will do it for you, and your customer feels more comfortable because your their card number is not floating around floating on around, a piece yeah. of paper somewhere. Take yeah, at so. least fifty percent down. We used to. Um, uh, we were really bad at hair shows. Ninety-eight dollar shear, and the girl really didn't have any money. Okay, you can put five dollars down, and five dollars in two weeks. And I would, <laughs> I would have this, and I'd take it back to Misty. Misty say, No, mom, no. <laughs> So she won't allow us to do that anymore, no, will no. she? We have to do but, three but when, pay, three payments, four if they're really... Yeah, well, and when you do yeah. three payments, even though it's going to only be two months, they think you're giving them three months to pay because they're making three payments. But the first one's that day, so they're not getting that month. So again, they think you're nicer than you really are. It does so. really increase your sales, and I say... I, I would say about half of them will go ahead and pay you in full then. Yeah, they'll sit there and they'll say, well... Uh, after they it, sit and they contemplate it, they'll say, oh, I'll just oh, go crap, ahead Oh, crap, go ahead and run it all. I mean, it's on a credit card. What does it make, you know? So... Uh, Do you uh, a different price for paying up front or... No. no. We don't, because, I mean, if you can... You know, you've paid, you know... You, you've got your money up front right away, so if they disappear on you, you... Well, you, something you know. else I want to tell you, you should always be consistent consistent in your prices. Yeah. If you're giving somebody a discount, give them a discount for a particular reason. And have that discount available to anybody for that particular reason. Uh, so we give 10% off to students We give 10% off to students and teachers and all that. But if, you know, if you're not consistent in your pricing, you sell... I sell him a shear for two hundred dollars, and next time I come in, I try to sell it to him for two hundred and fifty. He's going to say, "Wait a minute, he only paid two hundred for it." And you know, then uh, the truth you can remember, a lie is hard hard to remember. So, <laughs> oh, and, and be honest with your people, and it just makes it much simpler. I mean, if you you've got special prices for this and that, unless it's consistent, 
uh, you, you know it's going to be a problem. Yeah, we've had we've had people they'll use this as an excuse and they'll they'll call us on the phone and says, "Hey, tell my customer I can't discount this scissor for me," you know, and I'll, so I'll say, "Hey, no, this is the, our minimum advertised policy here." So I'm sorry, he can't do this for you. Yeah, and we will take those calls for you. you know, we'll, we'll do it for you. We'll be the bad guy. We want people to feel good about you. We don't care. You know, we, well, we like them to think good we've about had, us, We've too, had but, that a few times. Yeah, but uh, it's much more important that your customers feel good about you than they feel good about us. Five minutes. Oh, anybody okay. have any other questions? we got five minutes, or y'all want a five-minute break? Break? They say break. Break. Okay, take okay. a break. All Thank right. you for Thank you. Uh, coming. And come by and see us uh, tomorrow. And remember, we gave you five minutes, okay?